Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo, baby Flo. <laughs> she wins the world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. Alan Taylor will win. She's riding an amazing horse out of Baby Flo. One of the babies for Baby Flo. Well, you need a good Good job, Miss Alan. Good job. What's up, Flomies? Welcome back to my channel. We're at Oklahoma City. I want to take you guys around and show you who we brought, what we're doing here. We are at the American, it's a whole uh, name like the office, uh, Dunder Mifflin Pro-Am Marathon, <laughs> Rabies Awareness. It's like <laughs> Race for the Cure. Michael Scott's Dunder Mifflin Scranton Meredith Palmer Memorial Celebrity Rabies Awareness Fun Run Race for the Cure. This is Pam. Pro-Am. Pro-Am Race for the they hung up. It's the American Central Regional Contender Semifinals. And we're going to run two runs here today and tomorrow. We're going to run very early. And then our prayer is that we are in the top 10 in the average, top 10 in the average come back, and the top three in the redemption round get to also come back. So 13 people will get to move on to Abilene. And then the top five from Abilene from all the different regions competing against each other will get to go to um, the American in March. That took me about five hours of rule reading up one side and down the other to figure out that that's the simple gist of what we gotta do here. Basically, take one run at a time, let's get it, let's get it popping. I'm gonna show you guys our tax stall because we are staying here. We are tax stall amateurs. I'm gonna say that first of all. We know that people have like racks and things and all that jazz. We're rodeo people. We're never in stalls like this with access for like a luxury superfluous stall to be able to put stuff in. So this is a first for us, not a first, but you guys know that we don't do much of this type of stuff where we get to stay. And I have decided that for my goals this year that we're going to invest a little bit harder. So wherever we are, we're gonna like try to stay there. It's been my forte, my style to like go and come back, go and come back, go and come back because baby Flo for the last decade has hated staying away, not away from home, but she hates like overhead lights and she doesn't like hard floors. I don't know that any horse likes hard floors, but you know what I'm saying? Like she won't rest at all. Where the horses we're currently hauling will lay down, they're eating and drinking, it's totally fine. So as part of my new era, as part of this era of running baby Flo's offspring that are a lot less picky, Puma, Mojo, all these horses, it's gonna be easier. Um, on me if I start to learn to take advantage of the accommodations. And when Poppy goes with us, it'll be a lot easier too. So here's our amateur tax stall. But I'd like to show. I'm, I'm gonna show these off. Okay. These are professionally hang installed. Hang on, hang on. Oh, we got the tiny mic too. <laughs> these are professionally installed uh, racks for assorted various tack items. Cody, please get the close up of this uh, really high end latch. I went to take this one down and he said, don't mess with my latch. And I still, oh, there it is. Ah, oh, yeah. ooh, ah. Do I have giant carabiners? Do I have a portable saddle rack? Do I have all these things at home? Yes. Did I load it because it was like 10 degrees outside and I just loaded the bare minimum? Also, yes, I didn't load it because I was too cold and I was like the hay, the shavings, the blankets, the saddles and all the luggage were done. Toddler mom, I kind of was picking and choosing what it is. Why am I vlogging like this? Let me, let me get my stuff right again, hang on. Okay, so this thing is gonna kick off in 30 minutes, um, but I wanted to show you guys what we have. Cody and I both have our smoke show saddles here, a top secret blanket project. We're gonna restock our blankets, first of all, so that's the first thing. But second thing, next year, or I guess next winter, you guys asked, we listened, and there's something coming, but just give us time. And then we have our vintage NFR jacket and our splint boot bag. And I, this bag is so full of stuff and things. We just have all of our outfits, saddle sacks, light tack, like everything in here. These bags are baller because you can put dirty stuff in and they have a mesh bottom. So the dirt shakes out instead of like collecting with you. Um, we have our Uline wagon that is our free gift from ordering a bunch of stuff for the warehouse. And then um, my trusty tactical pad, I'm obsessed with this one. Oh, today's tax set 
Did I get it? Did I bring it? Did I forget it? Oh, no. Yeah. So, I'm taking off wild, wow, taking off wildflower, and I'm going to use ember today. And I'm not going to use the head stall because I am using a borrowed head stall, so I can't move my head stall. But today, isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. So we're cracking this out, which I'm super excited about. Um, and we've got our med kit underneath here. Camera equipment, boots. Alex rigged up blankets also. It's really warm in this building, so no need for all the things. You guys are seeing prairie hay here. It's only because we're out of alfalfa, just like this last feeding. So we're gonna get more alfalfa in here. The reason I bought some prairie hay is I love mixing forages. If you guys have seen my forage vlogs, you know that every type of forage, green grass, different grasses in different places geographically, they're all gonna have a different um, nutrient density. And so instead of like over supplementing your horse, you can just buy different grasses and it has different nutrients that you can supplement your horse with. Okay, this is my new thing for 2024, Journey to the Juvenile. This is John Gotti. I'm hauling him around as if I were Paris Hilton with a toy chihuahua. He goes where I go, and that I think is going to help us later. Brand yelling, water! In the back corner is my Halo hay net in Leopard. I'm obsessed with these because we can pack them up like crazy. Do you want to tell the people hello? Do you want to say something? Hang on, do you want to say, here, do you want to say hello? No, no. Do you want to say water? No. He says water really funny. You want to say water? Uh, say water. <laughs> he has to put put it all the way in his mouth. Um. Can you say your name? Can you say brand? Bank. 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 Good job. Can you say good luck, mommy? That mommy. Oh. <laughs> So hi. There he goes. Just know, whenever I'm on camera, Alex is running somewhere at a high rate of speed, being super dad. Okay, this is the Puma cat. So excited about her. I just braided her mane. I just brushed her off, but she is really deep into her breakfast this morning. So she's gonna have floofy stuff in her hair and you guys know I have learned to braid her hair sideways so that it will tuck behind her bridle because that's just her thing so she's a big girl um, Alex is like why is she so tall but she is so 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 big um, let me say that again she's not so big she's big to us because I know of a lot of barrel horses that are a lot bigger than her but um, you know Lolo comes up to like here on her just FYI, Gotti's going crazy. He was just climbing the walls. Could you not? Okay, and then Cody's mount. Morning. Whoa! Cody's mount, traffic flow, AKA Mojo. And he is just, you know, being extra Mojo-y today. He has gotten as dirty as you can possibly get. He has pooped all over the stall, walked through it. I am number 41, Cody is number 89, which means that we get to like properly help each other, look out for each other, um, help with brand, all the things and stuff. So I'm super excited for today that we're not running back to back because it'll be way fun to be very invested in each of our runs. Warrant Pin is really cool here. The arena is really cool. In 1991, I won reserve world champion in the youth class on Dr. Nick Bar, and it's in the very same arena. It's just cool. It's like, that was a long time ago. So this is really, really cool to come back with a different set of horses and do the things. So wish us luck. Alex, I was like, oh, Alex, it's, 1991, it's so crazy to think that we pulled up here with Poppy and, you know, had Dr. Nick Barr and we ran him and we came in this very same arena and he goes, and you're still doing the same crap. And I was like, but I love it. <laughs> okay, go get it. Get it. Shake out all the shavings. Those are dollars. 
the, shake out the dollars. Okay, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Good job. He cleans stalls better than half of y'all. You can learn. <laughs> oh, my jacket get you. My jacket get you. Oh. <laughs> no, I love it. Oh. I love that he's not going to get run over. Okay. Oh. Learning. One, two, three, woo! One, two, three, woo! So this is a really cool setup. Puma has already been in here, um, but Puma has not been in here with like a moat around. So they've got rope and shoots on one end. They've got buck and shoots on the other. Really cool thing. It looks like a rodeo, but they've got split timers up. And you guys know how I feel about split timers. If you don't, it breaks down your run into incremental sections, the straights and the turns to show you like where you need to speed up. It's a really cool tool in our industry. You can go to splittiming.com and see all about it. But um, it's a really cool thing when you're able to run at an event with split timer, you can really get a lot more data back and anything you can measure, you can improve. So that being said, there's an overhead thing in the alleyway. I'm pointing this out because I'm riding a five-year-old and there's an overhead um, thing that kind of feels low when you're running underneath it, especially on a big horse, and that goes uphill. So when she has run here, none of that has been here. So she's gonna lean on my experience of running through things like that all the time and these big black banners. But the cool thing is this arena already has big white walls, like off white walls that horses have to run into anyway. So she's used to seeing these walls. Um, but there's some more thing, you know, I can't like do a circle and then start in the alley. Um, she doesn't need that, but as a young horse, you kind of want to have, take all of those advantages that you can. So this will be really cool. Um, I, it was able to exhibition last night. Here's a look at that. She's a cutesy little ladybug, yes. but she's a mammoth, of course. Yes. <laughs> Just like the, she's like the elephant on uh, Sing 2. <laughs> yep. No. She's a cutesy little ladybug. Of course, she's not a ladybug. She's huge, but she's so beautiful. She's a mammoth, of course. She felt really great. I felt like there was places I could have been a lot better, so I'm gonna give it my all today. Why am I posted up on a stall? Because my child's inside and he's pretend cleaning stall and this is how I can talk to you guys because toddler life. <laughs> um, I just got done with my run. I cried. I am still crying after every run. This is run number nine on Puma. I'm so grateful. Um, to get even close to doing her justice. So it like moves me to tears and I just feel like that's kind of how 
gratitude affects me. I try not to be that friend that always is like a sap, but you know, a lot of passion brings a lot of emotion and that can go both ways. You can get really upset with a bad run, you can get really excited with a good run. And my best competitive advice is try to find the middle. Try to be really grateful for either side because the, the highs are high and the lows are low. And as soon as you can find middle and be pretty rational about it, you will find that you can be a lot more consistent. The more consistent your emotions, the more consistent your results. So that's what we try to do. Um, this was a really cool run. So far I'm 10th in the first round out of 104, I think. And I'm very excited. I made some mistakes. Um, the jockey could have been better. The horse was absolutely perfect. So. That was incredible. So now my shoer is meeting me here because we pulled a shoe a couple of days ago and we are gonna get her reset right here in the middle of the barn. Um, and they're driving from Missouri because my shoer drives a long way, but they happen to be on their way to Dallas, so it's not that crazy. But I'm still so grateful that Whitney and Philip are making the trip so Puma can get brand new fast shoes for tomorrow. Okay, it's 6 of 4 a.m. and it's Puma Cat's first time live on the news, so. She's been trying to drag me back to the stall and I don't blame her at all, not one little bit. So <laughs> anyway, this is our pre-run routine for round two. Oh, and this is your horse? This is my girl. Oh, yeah. What's her name? Puma. Puma. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, she's beautiful. She earned it. So. <laughs> Well, is it okay if we talk to you on camera yep. just kind of about like what you do, like what sure. this weekend's gonna like be like for sure. you, what it's like to compete? Yep. Have you ever competed in Oklahoma City before? I have. Okay, yep. cool. And then yep. maybe just like about like what it's like to compete in Oklahoma sure. City. That yep. way we can have something a little bit more Sounds local good. about yeah, it. No but problem. Yeah, that would be awesome. Chris, are you good back there? Where do you want? I was like, wherever you want us. And I'm going to do my best to keep her off of oh, no, she the can. top of your body. She can be wherever she wants. I really don't. Don't say that. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> and then I could just like stand here and be like, okay, like, tell me like about what you're doing this sure. weekend. And I can tell you what questions. Okay. It's my first before. interview. So take oh, it easy on yeah, me. I've, just like, I will. And this is, no, this is going to be live. Okay. So, okay. Like, Sweet. You, yeah. So you just tell me like, if you like want to restart a question, okay. just be like, can we restart that? It's Perfect. totally fine. But yeah. So we'll start with just like having you on camera, like okay. talking about like what you do. Like, okay. Sounds good. And I will do my best to keep her from running us over. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> and then I might try to get some videos. <laughs> <clears throat> of, like you guys with the horse like I don't sure. know if there's like any way we could show like actually show what you do like if we have any visual here or like um we should have uh Teton Ridge should have from yesterday so okay they so should have yep you? okay great yep. that sounds awesome it's early I know Cody are you getting this <laughs> okay do you want her the first time towards you or do you, or do you want to go? okay I'm ready whenever you are, but can, whenever you answer, just yeah, you'll just look at me. Look at you. Yeah, got it. Just, it's okay. Just a conversation. Got it. Um, first, can I just get your first and last name and just say it and spell it for me? Fallon Taylor, F A L L O N T A Y L O R. And then tell me what you competed. I'm a barrel racer. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me about what it's like to compete. Barrel racing is really cool. It's a speed event. It is 30 miles an hour on the back of a horse. And it's one of the most exhilarating things, not just for the barrel racer to do, but also for the fan to watch. It's a good old fashioned horse race. So when you're in the stands watching, when you buy your ticket, you're seeing girls all dressed up, going as fast as they possibly can. And there is a small margin of error. So it's really exciting. It's nail biting edge of your seat kind of action. And it's really, really exciting as the competitor to be a part of it. Awesome. And then tell me what it's like to compete in stuff like this weekend, like in rodeos. Competing in something like this weekend here in Oklahoma City is really important for our career because not a lot of opportunities come up where you can win a million bucks or have a chance. This is competing for Willy Wonka's golden ticket. We're all vying for a title that would not only be really, really cool to have the buckle on our shelf, but also really mean a lot to our future and how the rest of the year will play out. And then uh, tell me a little bit about your horse. So this is my horse, Fury Time, AKA Puma. Um, she's brand new to me. I bought her on Christmas day. She is really, really cool part of my program. She's a five-year-old mare I bought off my friend, Trisha. Um, she is a really big, quirky, sensitive girl that loves her job. And I am just so excited to be competing on her here in Oklahoma City. Awesome. And then speaking of just competing in Oklahoma yep. City, what, what is it like to compete here? Like, so, I, you told me you've done this before. When 
I was looking over some footage of competing in Oklahoma City this morning and found some footage of me at nine years old um, winning the Reserve Youth World Championships in this very arena. So running here again in under so much pressure is really cool because I've had a lifetime of competing in this arena on different levels and to take home this title to run under this much pressure is going to be so much fun. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to add? Like yeah, I, I'm so excited to see these stands packed on Saturday. I'm really, really excited for people to come out and enjoy the sport in this town. I know there's so much exciting stuff going on in Oklahoma City, but this is like the original sport. It's the best show on dirt, and I'm excited to see everybody come out and cheer us on. I'm sort of ready. And, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Last name. Taylor. Taylor. Yep. I wanted to say Miller. I'm horrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So what are you doing um, a look by for nine. Okay. So am I starting on you? And then you if you wanted to get both of us, like whatever you want to do. Oh, you are so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you just let me know whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm gonna do a little head bob situation first over at the Jim Nork Arena and the American Central Regional Finals happening this weekend over at the OKC Fairgrounds. Rodeo is coming to town. KOCO's Andre Goodson is there. She's checking in with some of the barrel racers. They're going to be competing this weekend. Kylie Cameron, good morning. I'm here with Fallon Taylor. She's one of the barrel racers that's going to be competing this weekend. So Fallon, tell me a little bit about what it's like to compete in rodeos like this one here in Oklahoma City. Well, this is a unique situation. This is a really cool playoff rodeo for us. What that means is kind of a tournament style. It's really exciting. This is where we have all competed for a chance to even be in Oklahoma City, and then we're competing for a chance to move on for an even bigger payout. So this is the first step in a whole lot of money for us as barrel racers and it's really nerve-wracking but also super exciting. Okay so tell me a little bit about what it's like to actually be a barrel racer. 99% of being a barrel racer is taking care of your animal so the 1% that we get to do inside of the arena is what we all look forward to but it's all about you know taking care of your animal making sure that they're up to speed these are our professional athletes and then the fun part is going down this alleyway the gateway of champions and actually getting to make the run. Awesome and then you tell me that you have some pretty special experiences here in Oklahoma City. Could you tell me a little bit about that? I do. So when I was nine years old, I was the reserve world champion youth barrel racer here in Oklahoma City with kind of the pillar of my whole entire breeding program, a horse named Dr. Nick Barr. And I got to run down this alleyway and make a whole lot of memories. And I can't wait to go down there for a chance to win a million bucks and make some bigger memories. Awesome. Well, if you want to come out and see Fallon, the big events are going to be starting tomorrow night at 730. Now, if you want to get some tickets, you can get those online or in their box office. Back to you guys. Awesome. Okay. I think that'll work. Sweet. Thank you You're so You're so welcome. Much. You have been awesome. Thank so you. Have a great day. Three, two, one. This weekend, athletes from all over the country will have the chance to saddle up and compete right here in Oklahoma City. the faster of my two runs I can go back and see like the pieces where I kind of made her feet slow down and where I didn't ride perfect it's run number 10 and I'm so grateful for this mare I'm so honored for the privilege to be the jockey chosen for her because this was a horse that was not for sale so I'm really excited for the privilege to be able to own her and run her and have her in my program to make some babies later um, but this would have been really really cool I was technically two spots out of the average they took 10 in the average but they dropped down due to the way that their rules work so they took 11 and i was 14th i believe run number 10 on a horse to be top 15 in the average at an american contender regional finals is pretty mind-blowing to me and just shows you what a cool horse this is and how big my goals can be for the future 
But that being said, I do feel a little bit like I'm cheating on Lolo at this moment. And so I've been, um, for my Lolo update, she has gone to Don Lee. She's gone to the vet at Double X. She has been fully checked out. It looks like we are definitely on the uphill swing. She's most likely going to be ready for late spring, early summer rodeos. And so we're going to keep her going on the upswing with really light workouts, laser, body flow, infrared, red light, all the things um, to make her coming back, keep coming back really, really strong and hopefully stronger than ever. So that's my hope for her. And then Puma and I, we have really, really massive goals. So while the American isn't something that we can check off our list for 2024, we're gonna keep trying to go. So we're gonna try to go get qualified again to go back to the regional semifinals for 2024 and or 2025. We're gonna try to get qualified for the world show. We are going to try to do some really big things at pro rodeos. And my goal is to win $100,000 on her this year between barrel races and rodeos. So let's see if we can get that done. I can do it with your support and your vibes behind me. So when you think about us, please send some good vibes our way. We wanna be on that winning train again. So I'm really excited for this year. I'm gonna to go to some rodeo stops far away from home. So hopefully I'll see you there too. But make sure you're subscribed, ding that notification bell because some really exciting things are coming and I absolutely can't wait. Also, for those of you that always ask about the winter blankets, they're about to be restocked on tactical.com. So keep your eye out, keep refreshing. Our sheets and blankets sold out in just a matter of days and they just unloaded off the truck into Mini Ranch Arena. It's chaos in there because there's so many. We tried to be able to give you guys enough of all the patterns that you love until next season. So you guys get ready for that restock at tactical.com. You can even go to the website and be notified um, through our list that pops up so that you'll get an email as soon as they come out and you don't miss them this time around. As always, you guys, don't forget to count your blessings, stay consistent, and say thank you to Jesus. See you next time. I came from a non-horse background and wanted to be a professional barrel racer. Now I'm excited to say I am a world champion, but it was a long road to get here and I learned a ton of lessons. I got swindled, taken, had mentors lead me wrong, and now I want to make something so that you don't have to. 30 plus years of experience have been put in my horse bosses dashboard for hours and hours of lessons in specific categories like hitting barrels, alley issues, when to enter, training your horse, and many, many more. Please join us today. You will not regret it.